This is the Turner Guilford Knight Correctional Center in Miami, Florida. And this is Eduardo Arama. Arama is supposed to be locked up inside said facility, but he's not. And that's a problem. The inmate did not escape. Instead, a paperwork error triggered his early release into the public on what just happened to be his 52nd birthday. It was a nice present, considering Arama still had just under a year to serve, linked to criminal mischief, probation violation, and shooting or throwing a deadly missile into a dwelling or vehicle. Yes, throwing a missile into a dwelling or vehicle. After realizing the mistake, authorities issued warnings to the public, including this wanted flyer. Based on Arama's criminal record, his accidental release was a serious situation. For nearly three days, there was no sign of Arama until he resurfaced in an unlikely place. On a Zoom call with the Miami-Dade Circuit Court, that's Arama, who despite being aware that he's currently a wanted man, looks pretty relaxed from an undisclosed location with a friendly little pooch on his lap. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Broward County Court set up an easily accessible portal for remote hearings. Prior to his release, Arama had a hearing scheduled for today that he should be joining from inside the correctional facility. But instead, it looks like he's on the patio. Despite being wanted by police, he shows up for his hearing and is even a little early. At the time, the only other person on the video call is his attorney, Assistant Public Defender Fadya Salem. But after a brief conversation discussing his situation with her, he hangs up before the actual hearing begins. Mr. Arama is a sentenced inmate. He is sentenced to state prison. He was released in error. As you know, Mr. Arama was present. His video was working. Um, then he turned it off. Ms. Salem, have you spoken with him about surrendering? Judge, I have spoken to him. This is his only request. He has only but a few possessions left to his name and a dog. And he's merely asking for the court to uh, give him a date to surrender so that he can find somebody to take those possessions. Despite the fact that Arama is supposed to be in jail, Salem continues to make the case for a little more free time for her client. Your Honor, I, he's not a flight risk. You know, answers the authorities' calls, appears in court on Zoom, is not at risk for a flight. We're merely asking for a day so that he can get his possessions to somebody to take care of. But Judge Marlene Fernandez Caravetzos seems to think Arama's dog-sitting vacation has lasted long enough. He's had that day, Ms. Salem. He was released on Monday. It's now Thursday. He needs to surrender today. Eduardo Arama was taken back into custody the following day without incident. The Miami-Dade Department of Corrections issued a statement saying, quote, our review of the circumstances surrounding this inmate release is ongoing to include a full internal investigation. Now to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where Judge John Hurley is conducting remote bond hearings with inmates held at the Broward County Jail. 25-year-old Brian Noval believes he's only been charged with battery, but the record reads differently. Uh, you were charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, domestic violence battery. You're going to be held no bond, sir, until further order of the court. Thank you. The realization that he's going back to jail starts to sink in for Naval. Are you kidding me? Yeah, no, I'm not kidding you. That's the truth. You're not going anywhere. That's that's the truth. All right, thanks. All right, Suzanne Wall. My charge Walt. was battery. Oh, wow, I know, man. But that's the way life is. What did he say? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, bring that guy back. So what did you just say when you walked away? I called you a because you're... Woo. That's Did you? The charges I had yesterday. Okay, hold on a second, sir. A sir, I'm, this court is inclined to hold you in contempt of court, and I want to know uh, from you. Give me a reason why I should not hold you in contempt of court. I'm, I don't see a reason why you shouldn't be. Because okay. There's not a reason yep. this should be here. Okay, sir. I find you in contempt of court for using that uh, type of language with the court you just used. I'm going to ask you um, if you have anything to say before I pass sentence. 
Uh, I apologize. I was out of line. I'm just upset because this is not what I was charged with yesterday. Okay, sir. I was sir. charged with a battery. I accept your apology, and I will uh, sentence you to 60 days in the Broward County Jail. Thank you. After getting hit with two months in jail, it appears the foul-mouthed defendant may have finally learned his lesson. Or... Can I take the back in? <laughs> Maybe not. All right, sir, hold it. Come on back. Come on back, sir. Sir, I'm inclined to hold you in contempt of court again. Now I'm going to send you to another 60 days to run consecutive to the prior 60 days. So now you're up to 120 days in the Broward County Jail. Do you have anything else you'd like to say? Uh, no. All right, sir, thank you very much. You're done. I didn't even know you can do that. Yes, he can, and yes, he did. All right, thank you. He was actually released four days later by the judge. Next up, we head to a traffic court proceeding in Sacramento, California. The court clerk is waiting on the defendant, Scott Green, who's appearing today for speeding and license tag violations. Okay. There he is. Hello? Oh, Mr. Green? Yes. Yes, defendant Green is also Dr. Scott Green, a plastic surgeon. Hi. Are you uh, available for trial? It, it kind of looks like you're in an operating room right now. I am, sir. I'm in an operating room. Yes, I'm available for trial. Go right ahead. Okay, let me just briefly advise you that the proceedings right now, they are being live streamed on YouTube. That's because traffic trials are required by law to be open to the public. Since we're limiting physical access to the courtroom right now, that's how we're making them open to the public, okay? Okay. Streaming or not, Dr. Green is ready to go. The good doctor is sworn in and continues to multitask as he waits for court commissioner Gary Link to get things started. So, uh, can everybody hear me? Officer, yes, sir. Officer Monroe, Mr. Green. So, unless I'm mistaken, I'm seeing a defendant that's in the middle of an operating room appearing to be actively engaged in providing services to a patient. Is that correct, Mr. Green? Yes, sir. Commissioner Link seems a bit concerned about Dr. Green's setting and his ability to continue the hearing while performing a facelift on a patient. I do not feel comfortable uh, for the welfare of a patient if you're in the process of operating that I would put on a trial, notwithstanding the fact that the officer's here today. What's sir, I, have another, I have another surgeon right here who's doing the surgery with me, so I can stand here and allow them to do the surgery also. Not at all. I'm, I, I don't think so. I don't think that's appropriate. I think we're going to have, I'm going to come up with a different date when you're not actively involved or participating in attending to the needs of a patient. Looks like Dr. Green's plan isn't going over so well with the court. I apologize, Your Honor, to the court. Sometimes yeah. surgery doesn't always go as, the court. as you know. Yes, it we happens. Don't. We want to keep people healthy. We want to keep them alive. That's that's important. Thank you. Okay, you're both free to go now. Although the Zoom received plenty of attention from the media, the original court business was resolved when Dr. Green paid his fines just a few days later. We're going to find a case, Nicoletti versus Stevens, case number 0672172PH. Next, we take you inside the Oakland County Circuit Court near Detroit, Michigan. The judge is Martha Anderson. May it please the court, Your Honor, Paul Nicoletti appearing on behalf of myself. That's attorney Paul Nicoletti, who's in court because of an ongoing feud with a former client, Karen Stevens. Good afternoon, Judge. Karen Stevens, in pro per for my motion for sanctions against Mr. Nicoletti for this uh, vexatious and frivolous PPO. Stevens claims Nicoletti has petitioned the court for a personal protection order against her over accusations of stalking. She's here to fight the order and try to bring sanctions against Nicoletti. My motion for sanctions against Mr. Nicoletti for this uh, vexatious and frivolous PPO. I'm sorry, on this what? I have a motion for sanctions against I know Mr. that. And the purpose of the sanctions are, are based on what? It was a frivolous and vexatious PPO based on nonsense. I am not stalking Mr. Because Nicoletti. I haven't signed a PPO. Just to clarify, the personal protection order that Stevens is referring to has not even been issued. His petition for a PPO. Okay, I'm, let me. Okay, were you served? No, I wasn't. But may I, 
No, you may not. How can you ask to sanction someone when you haven't even been served? That's the point. He Stevens, do not, do not interrupt me when I'm speaking, ma'am. I have a constitutional right to be heard. On what basis? There is no case before me, ma'am, other than the fact that you filed this frivolous motion taking up this court's time for no good reason other than your own personal vendetta against this man. I did not issue a PPO. And here you are taking up my time so that you want me to chastise him and, quite, and make him pay money? No, ma'am. Your relief is denied, and in addition to that, I am sanctioning you with costs of $500. Thank you, Your Honor. So not only does Stevens fail to get sanctions against Nicoletti, but she's hit with a $500 fine of her own. Unhappy with the decision, she has some choice words for the judge. I knew it was fixed. I beg your pardon? I knew it was fixed. Miss Stevens, I highly suggest that you just exit my courtroom and go pay the sanctions before I find you in contempt. But the story doesn't end there. Due to a clerical mistake, Stevens is back before Judge Anderson four months later. Good morning, may it please the court, Karen Stevens. Ms. Stevens, the last time you appeared in court, the court ordered that you pay $500 in costs. The clerk's office made a mistake with respect to your credit card and only $5 was assessed as opposed to the 500. When the clerk's office attempted to correct the mistake they made, you basically objected to your credit card company, and that brings you here today. Do you have the $495 that this is the balance owed? I have my credit card, um, but I did file an objection and an answer to this order to show cause that wasn't properly served, didn't have an affidavit of merit. Um, Looks like Stevens still wants to discuss the protection order, but Judge Anderson isn't having it. Ms. Stevens, do you have $495 with which to pay today? I just said I have my credit card. I do not have cash. Very well then, Ms. Stevens. You may go down to the clerk's office, pay $495 forthwith to take care of the $500 that this court assessed you the last time you were here. But Karen Stevens? isn't one to go quietly. I'm entitled to know what uh, statutes or court rules you rely on to uh, sanction me in the first place. That's part of due process. Ms. Stevens, do you wish to comply with my request or do you wish me to find is it, you? Is it a court order? I need a court order. Ms. Stevens, my clerk will call down to the clerk's office and let them know you are coming. There will be no court orders, what you're saying? Ms. Stevens, please do as I've directed you to do. Thank you. Stevens ultimately lost her feud with the judge and Nicoletti. She was not only ordered to pay the fine or she owed the court, but Nicoletti's attorney's fees as well. It was fixed. Thanks for being a fan of Court Cam. Subscribe to AE to never miss a new video and catch full episodes on AETV.com.